What's up, y'all, and welcome back to Daddy's Talk. I'm your host, Robert, and today, today, I'm going to be touching on my first impressions of Power World, Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, and just talking about how life has been going the last couple of weeks. But before I get into all that, as always, if this is your first time here, then welcome. But if you're a returning listener and or watcher, then welcome back. Y'all know here at Dad Needs to Talk, it's all about fatherhood and family, manga, anime, TV, movies, and video games. So, I hope everybody out there has been well. Um, it has been a couple of weeks since I've gotten to record. Uh, life has just been chaotic and things of that nature. Um, some of y'all know uh, of some family stuff that happened at the beginning of the year with us losing a family member on my wife's side. So, had to do a lot of stuff situated, getting that situated or whatever. Um, but, you know, things are kind of starting to slow down a little bit regarding that. Um, but then, of course, <laughs> uh, half, half, half the people in the house got sick. So, that's been my last handful of days is dealing with that as well. Because, um, and it happened because um, uh, parents 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 listen to me if you know that your kid is sick like feverishly sick do not send them to school because that's the situation that happened with us to where uh i think it was tuesday or wednesday night or evening or whatever uh there was a big email that went out from the uh from the nurse at my two youngest kids, their elementary school, sending out a memo being like, hey, pretty much what I just said, hey, if your kids are sick, keep them at home because we're having an outbreak of illnesses or whatever. And then sure enough, the next day, my wife had to go pick up our two youngest and because uh, cause the middle boy, he had a fever and when she went to go, so when she was going to pick up <laughs> our middle child of course she was like well since I'm already here I might as well go and pick up Vash the baby or whatever just get them both or whatever and then when she walked in they were like oh well since you're here uh, Vash is in this other room laying down not feeling well so they both ended up getting sick and then my wife also ended up getting sick because my wife was a substitute teacher at that school earlier in the week as well so all three of them were out of commission for a handful for a few days um and it it almost got me the sickness almost got me but i felt the internal power struggle happening within myself (laughs) and i won and i overcame so far fingers crossed but like because i think it was like friday I could feel it. I could feel the struggle going on inside my body. Um, but, you know, here we are, persevered. But, uh, so yeah, so that, that's been like the last, that, that's been like the craziness that's been happening and why I haven't really been able to record like I've been hoping to or whatever um, these last couple of weeks just because life happened or whatever. Uh, but I'm here now. And uh, other little thing I'll touch on too is, of course, uh, we're, we're we're starting to wind down uh, basketball season for my uh, for the school wise for my for my three oldest in, in eighth grade, and things still are going really really well. So, not this past week, the week before, so two weeks ago. Uh, we were very proud of the oldest three kids because, uh, well, I get hold on real, real, before I go into the basketball thing, or whatever. Last, last little funny thing about the illness thing, and how we kind of first knew that it was uh, that it that the illness came from the school was that my middle son started feeling sick first, and we knew that process elimination it had to be school because for one. He doesn't do sports and other activities like the older three. So, so you know, whenever the older three gets sick or whatever, it's like, okay, we're traveling around, going to different places around, all different mix of people or whatever. So, 
you know, more chances or whatever. But him, he only goes to school. And because of the cold weather, he has not been going outside to play with friends. So it's like, okay, process elimination. He's only been going to school. And then he just stays in his room playing video games. <laughs> so it's got to be the school. So anyway, I had to get that, uh, bring up that little laugh. But uh, so yeah, so, so my oldest three um, truly showed their competitive nature and the will to push through perseverance because I had a conversation with them uh, a couple weeks ago when we kind of, you know, was first dealing with the family loss that happened and, you know, kind of just, you know, because at some point, you know, kids are growing up and you also have to be realistic with your kids or be upfront with them on certain things, certain aspects of life. And so I kind of had a conversation with the kids about how we're all going to go through certain things that are out of our hands. Um, but we also have to, of course, for sure, it's okay to grieve and to cry and to feel, you know, whatever you're feeling but to also know that there also comes a time to where it's like, hey, you can't let that paralyze you and just cause you to just fully stop um, just because sometimes there there might be situations to where there's still other things in life that you need to keep going and keep moving and things of that nature and stuff, whatever, because just like everything, you know, it's like, hey, you know, yes, this is happening to me, but, you know, work is still happening, school is still happening, sports is still happening, bills are still happening, you know, just different things like that to where you kind of have to have that mental fortitude to be able to like, okay, hey, I have something that I need to do, so I need to push forward, even if it's just for a couple of hours, like, okay, hey, I need to take care of X, Y, Z or whatever, and then I can come back and then, you know, continue to grieve or continue to do, you know, whatever that personal thing is. And so I had that conversation with them a few weeks ago and then they showed that because unfortunately the funeral fell on Thursday, which is their game day for school. And so, of course, we talk with the school staff, talk with the coaches and stuff, whatever, about how, you know, we could, you know, uh, pull it off, whatever, with, you know, us having to go do this, whatever, but then they still wanted to play in their games or whatever. Uh, and so we were to, to get that going or whatever. And so all three of them had amazing performances that night considering what we just what they just had to go through earlier in the day um at the uh funeral and dealing with the family stuff whatever but my oldest daughter and remember she's the one that's done track her whole life and just started playing basketball for the first time this year or whatever she had a career high 19 points in a nail biter of a game where they won uh, my other daughter that's been the other twin that's been playing for a while her team, I think she had about 15 or so, whatever, and they blew out their opponent by 50 plus points. And then my son had a, the oldest son had a thriller of a performance and of a game to where it literally came down to like the last couple of minutes of the game and they pulled off the win and he had 28 points. <laughs> so it's like they all went out there and balled out. Um, and heck, even the weekend before, he went to guest at a tournament. Because, um, like, like I mentioned before, you know, we travel around a lot. He gets a lot of eyeballs and stuff on him. So, somebody that we knew from the past or whatever, we reconnected with and asked him to guest play on their team a couple weekend, a few weekends ago and stuff. And, uh, you know, just kind of help out or whatever, and he showed out that weekend too. He went for he he played in three games that Saturday, and did better and better each game. He had 
15, 19, and I think 26 in those three games. So, you know, I, I, I love bragging on my kids and stuff and just, you know, showcasing how proud I am with these accomplishments and stuff. And like I said, was just super proud that they were able to, you know, go through and deal with this family event and then go through and still uh, perform the best that they've all performed, period, um, later that same night and stuff. So, um, so yeah, so shout out to my kids doing super awesome as we're getting ready to wind down the basketball season for the school at least um, and get ready to play in this uh, district championship tournament in a few weeks or whatever. So just got a couple weeks left in basketball season. And then it'll probably be maybe like a, like a month break or so. And then it's going to be going into track season. So <laughs> and that, it never stops. So, but, uh, uh, but yeah, so aside from that, everything else, like I said, just trying to stay healthy and dodging illnesses and stuff um, and things of that nature. But otherwise, life has been pretty solid. Like I always try to say, just try to take it and tackle it one day, one moment at a time um, to make it through one day and then I can continue to fight the fight the next day. So, going on from there. Uh, it's been lots of interesting things happening game-wise. Uh, and of course, if, this, if you are new here for whatever reason, I always do time steps for everything. So I always usually start all the shows off talking about life updates and stuff and then talking about in any variation of an order but game stuff anime stuff manga stuff and there's always time stamps for those different sections of stuff if you want to jump ahead or want to hear certain things or whatever look in the description below for all the information so starting off with some game stuff um i know a lot of people are excited because of uh two big games came out um the other day uh, like a Dragon Infinite Wealth as well as Tekken 8 both came out Friday both seem to have are, are, are getting stellar reviews and stuff and positive discussions around them um, I'm not big of a fighting game person but I just, I just admire it from afar and then I've unfortunately never gotten to play any of the uh, Yakuza slash Like a Dragon games it is on my list to hopefully get to someday. I know, uh, shout out to the homie Polo from uh, Mike Check. They're doing a live stream of their uh, their monthly live stream podcast episode right now on YouTube. I was just watching it right before I went to record this. But um, I know Polo, uh, a couple months ago, he went through from beginning to current and played through all the Yakuza games <laughs> in like a month or two. So I know he's hyped for um, Infinite Wealth, but yeah, so hopefully someday I'll get around to it. Now, as for myself, uh, I think I think I'm gonna start off with uh, Prince of Persia: The Lost Crown. Now, this is a game I am super super loving right now. Uh, it is a 2D side scrolling kind of like action adventure kind of metroidvania style of game where you have this big map that you're that you're uh, exploring and stuff and of course you're going to encounter certain barriers or places you can't get to until you get certain items or certain powers and abilities and stuff and the other thing that i love about this is that this is done not just by ubisoft but specifically ubisoft montpellier which is the team that created the Rayman Legends and Rayman Origins games. And if y'all have been listening to this podcast for a while, y'all know how much I love those Rayman games. Like Legends came out, I think, 10 years ago now. And to this day, I still play it. I started off playing it with my nieces and nephews all those years back. Continue to play it you know, myself. And then now I'm playing it with my own kids and stuff. It has just been a game series that is very near and dear to my heart and so when this game was initially announced last year or whatever i honestly was kind of like eh 
you know, whatever, because I've never really been, I've never really gotten into Prince of Persia too much. So when I saw the name, I was like, okay, you know, and, and like the initial trailer or whatever looked okay, but I was kind of, eh, you know, not really care too much about it or whatever. But then towards the end of last year, they announced that, hey, it's going to get a demo. So I was like, okay, I'll probably check out the demo. And then along the way, uh, in the lead up to the demo and the game coming out or whatever, I found out that it was the Rayman Legends team. And then this went from barely on my radar to boop, top on my radar. And especially when I played that free demo that they put out, I was like, oh yeah, oh yeah, th this, this is a Robert type of game. But visually i love like the unique look of the game uh the action and the combat and the exploration it is so fun so so fun and they have it set up to where you can either have it best in kind of like explorer mode where there's little to no hints about you know where you need to go on the map or you can kind of put on kind of like a guided mode to where it's not going to tell you 100% everything step by step but it'll put a couple of markers on the map of like hey these are the objectives you need to go to or you need to head towards um, but it's still up to you to play through and execute and but they also do a really good job of having pretty solid customization options for how you play and stuff so you can adjust the enemy the enemy difficulty um as well as how much damage and stuff you are doing and other little things in between so pretty good pretty solid game um like i said it kind of it, it has some twists and turns early on in the story because basically so uh so you're playing as sargon who is one of these legendary characters called immortals who are basically tasked with protecting the royal family well the prince the prince of persia gets kidnapped and uh, taken to this kind of like a mythical mountain and so you're kind of exploring this mountain trying to recover the prince while also navigating the oddities and stuff of this uh of this environment and so but yeah it, it's been it's been super fun to uh to play through but yeah so highly recommend uh, there's a demo pretty much on every platform the game is on every platform ps4 ps5 all the xboxes nintendo switch pc you can find it pretty much um on all platforms and stuff so definitely go and uh check it out but um yeah i, th I think i'm about maybe about 10 or 12 hours into the game or so so it's pretty pretty meaty game uh i had luckily i had like another um uh gift card at work uh from my job whatever that i was able to to cash in some points on so i didn't have to pay out of pocket for the game which was a nice little added bonus too to where i was like oh okay i got enough uh little rewards points for get at work to get a uh a gift card or whatever so i used that to uh buy prince of persia so very very dope but yeah loving the game super super fun um next up the next game that kind of has taken the internet by storm uh unexpectedly is freaking uh <laughs> power world now Power World is a game that jokingly was described as a uh, Pokemon with guns, but it's 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 a good deal more than that. But when they first showed off the game and the initial trailers and stuff, whatever, it just like oh Pokemon looking creatures with guns and shooting and stuff, whatever, and that's kind of what got people's initial attention or whatever but at the heart of this game it is actually a survival crafting type of game so right now so the game is in early access it is on xbox game pass or it's on 
but you can buy it on a PC on Steam, I think for 30 bucks. But uh, but yeah, this game just like blew up, took over the world. I think, let me see. I think in the first week of release, it sold, I believe, yep, 8 million players, 8 million copies sold. Not 8 million people playing, 8 million copies sold. And that is just on PC. Now, it's not counting how many people are accessing it through Xbox Game Pass. But yeah, it sold 8 million copies within 6 days and just kind of took the world by storm. And so when I saw it was on Game Pass, I was like, hey, I might as well take a look at it and see what's going on. And next I knew, three hours went by, and I was like, yo, where did the time go? <laughs> but it's just it's just dumb fun. It is just dumb fun to where you, you get to customize your character, and then you kind of just get set out into the world, and you get to see the creatures, which are called pals, you just wander around the environment, and you just go out and just start you know, knocking down trees, getting, you know, wood and stone so you can build your crafting table and then eventually you can build a uh, kind of like a settlement, a, a camp area or whatever. And you can put the pals to work and they have different traits and stuff from being lazy to hard worker, so on and so forth. Uh, you can a attack the pals directly yourself or you can throw out your pals like a Pokemon and they fight each other and stuff. Uh, but <laughs> my first situation with this game and just because, like I said, I, I didn't know about the survival elements and stuff initially or whatever. So I'm playing the game or whatever. And then it's like, okay, hey, okay, I need to get some wood and stuff, whatever. So I'm, you know, just punching trees, getting some wood until you know, I can get, a, make me a club or whatever. And then I run into my first pal. And so this is before, uh, I think this was before I had crafted any of the little balls to catch them or whatever. So I'm just out here in the woods, just duking it out with, with the, uh, with the little pals or whatever. But... <laughs> I'm up here fighting, boom, 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 going hand to hand with the, with the creatures myself, and then I'm like, okay, his health is getting low, and then I delivered one more hit, and it didn't knock him out; it killed him. <laughs> and they just slump over. It ain't like Pokemon where you know they just disappear. Or whatever it's like, no, their lifeless body with X's over their eyes are just slumped over on the ground knocked out and then I'm just like looking at the 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 blood on my hands of like what have I done <laughs> it was just like did 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 I do this was this my doing and so I was like yo okay so I'm killing these things or whatever and it, it was just fun but yeah just building up my little camp made me a little house um, and then just going out in the world and just exploring and capturing and all these little things, or whatever. It was a good little fun time. I haven't really played too much more since that first uh, couple of since that first weekend, the other weekend or last weekend, just because life been busy, or whatever. And I got my hands on Prince of Persia, so but uh, uh, it was fun. And then yesterday, uh, my wife and my baby boy Vash, they. Uh, played it too or whatever and so my wife was going in on the game Vash was loving it he's like oh mom, mommy oh get get him get him get him and so he he just Vash is just having a blast just watching this because of course he just seeing these cute little creatures just running around he's chasing after them and stuff whatever uh, it, it, it's just a fun wholesome time uh, now of course you know there's like the internet likes to do whatever there's all this controversy around the game or whatever as far as like oh is this copying pokemon and yada 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 yes some of these some of the designs are like yo okay that is that is pretty much that pokemon but i don't care 
I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> I'm just having fun with this game in the moment. And so, you know, hey, if if, if the uh, Game Freak Ninjas come through and take it down, so be it. I enjoyed my handful of hours with it. But otherwise, it's cool. Go check it out. Like I said, if you have um, Game Pass, um, it's on Game Pass, both for Xbox and PC Game Pass. So, check it out or whatever um, and just see what's going on. But, yeah, it, it was a fun little time. And like I said, I, I love seeing my, my wife and son just having a blast, just uh, adventuring into the world, chasing after these creatures and stuff, and just, uh, yeah, having fun. So, yeah, so that that's Power World. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, so, that's it as far as like, what I've been playing. So, some little new stuff I want to touch on briefly. Um which would be mainly some new surrounding the next game on my radar, which is Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. And so, um, hold on, I'm trying to make my little timestamp notes. notes. So, the developers, Rocksteady, um, I'm, I'm in their Discord for the game, and they've been doing um, some Q&A sessions and stuff, whatever, and they have been very, very detailed with the game. So, depending on when you're listening to this, or whatever the game already be at, might already be out. But I know um early the uh, early access uh, for the uh, deluxe editions begins uh, tomorrow night, the 29th, and then uh, the regular release for everybody else is on Friday, February 2nd. So, they've shown a bunch of stuff, whatever, with the game. That I feel like, aside from the people who just don't care about the game or are just hating for haters' sake, uh, for anybody that's actually interested in the game or whatever, so they let out, they gave out some more concrete details on some things that were very important. So first of all, they confirmed that yes, you can fully play it, start to finish the whole story campaign as well as all the in-game stuff and all the future DLCs. Fully solo if you want to, or any combination up to four players cooperatively. Uh, they said that so all all of the battle pass stuff is cosmetics only, and there's a basic game, a battle pass that is free, and then there's a premium battle pass, which once again is just higher, uh, just more uh, cosmetics and stuff, and. The battle passes stay forever, so even if it's a new season or whatever, you can always go back to a previous season and always have access to the battle passes and stuff and all the skins and content and stuff from there. Um, all of the DLC for sure that they have roadmapped for this first year are all free, so each, uh, each DLC season, which is going to last about three months roughly, it's going to include one new playable character, a new location, um, and then kind of like split up into like two episodes story-wise. Um, they already announced that the first one is uh, Elseworlds Joker. So it's like a alternate dimension uh, Joker or whatever. And they showed a little bit of the gameplay for him. And the gameplay for him looked super dope. Like him, like the way he was like gliding around the uh, the environment and stuff looks pretty cool. But yeah, so yeah, so they announced all the DLC, all the new characters and stuff. All that stuff will be free, and just like the battle pass stuff, whatever, you can go back at any point in time and access any of the older content. So they're so they want to make sure they don't create a uh, FOMO, fear of missing out, or whatever. It's like nope, all the content you can access for free at any point in time and so that's been like one of like the biggest highlights uh, for me um, in relation to this game and so I'm trying to think uh, what other stuff uh, oh the HUD will be customizable so they, they have uh, several things that you can customize up front as far as like the mini map, the aiming reticle uh, text size, enemy health bars, damage number all that stuff whatever uh, screen effects health shields all that stuff whatever you can customize all that stuff uh, and then they're gonna continue to tweak it um, even after launch with as they you know continue to get um, more feedback and stuff 
But uh, yeah, so that, that that's kind of like 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 the biggest takeaways from it. But yeah, I am super hyped, super excited to get my hands on and stuff. Um, I myself going to be playing it pretty much fully solo, uh, just because. Yeah, I know me. I'm mainly a solo game player, so I was very happy to hear that. And also, when I played the closed alpha a couple months back, being able to just go through and explore this myself was super dope. And I look forward to also seeing what uh, new characters and locations they bring into the game um, as the uh, new seasons and DLC come out um, over the course of the year and stuff, whatever. And like I said, it, it's really cool for me. Oh, also. If you're playing solo, you can pause the game. So it's like, hey, when you're in the maze or whatever, the game will be paused. So I was like, dope. That is super cool because as a parent, life gets busy or whatever, which is kind of why I had it really stopped. Uh, granted, I wasn't like, like the biggest, biggest Destiny fan, but just as I became a parent and my family got busy and busier, I couldn't play games like that as much or whatever. Uh, that don't allow pausing or whatever because hey stuff happens i gotta go run errands and stuff whatever oh i gotta go pick up somebody from practice or whatever so <laughs> but i'm um, saying so i'm happy that that feature is there uh i'm trying to think uh what other thing uh but yeah but either way I'm, I'm excited to play that and i'm also happy that i also won't have to pay out of pocket because i also have some extra uh uh points saved up to get the at least the standard edition um pretty much not costing me anything out of my pocket this uh this week or whatever so i look forward to playing it and then because of the fact that they have the content where hey you can access it whenever i don't feel like i'm i'm gonna have to rush to constantly keep up with everything if life gets busy or i'm on to play some other games well hey maybe just months later i can go back and just see what all stuff that they put out or whatever so but yeah so just had to show some love to the suicide squad game because i know it's a lot of people hating on it and stuff whatever like i said now i'm not talking about the people that are disappointed in it or whatever i'm talking about the people that are like going out of their way to to voice their disgust or whatever and it's like okay hey for people who are claiming not to like something or whatever y'all are going out of y'all's way to find YouTube videos, to find Twitter threads, to find Instagram posts or whatever, and just post nasty hate comments or whatever instead of just being like, oh, that's the game I don't like. I'm going to keep scrolling. So, I don't know. I'm not going to run on it too much or whatever. <laughs> um, also, and I, I'm going to have to find somebody's Twitch stream to watch, but they got some uh, pretty cool Twitch drops uh, enabled. So, you're going to have to kind of get some really cool little trinkets and stuff for the different characters um, to have on your weapons and cosmetic stuff, whatever. So I'm gonna have to find some Twitch strings to put on the, put on the background so I can get those free uh, little rewards and stuff. So, uh, but yeah, so that's it as far as uh, the Suicide Squad game. Uh, what other stuff? Uh, let me see. I know there, there's like a few kind of like new, like minor news things I'm going to touch on. So the big one, and I'm a, cause I, I'm not, I'm not necessarily like a news guy, but just to discuss it a little bit or whatever, but freaking, what was it? Thursday morning? Yeah. Thursday morning, freaking, uh, Microsoft announced that they had laid off 1900 people from their gaming division. So and which the bulk of it came from people from the um, Activision Blizzard side of things that just uh, you know that they just uh, acquired a couple months ago, or whatever. So it was like devastation across social media, or whatever. Just like all these people losing their jobs or whatever, and definitely sucks, or whatever. Because it was like, yo, okay, you know, they were kind of like in a bad situation with the former CEO and stuff, or whatever. Which is kind of why this deal was kind of starting to happen and then of course tons of people lost their jobs or whatever in the aftermath of this situation and uh big games and stuff got because of blizzard's secret uh new project nickname uh, odyssey got canceled and that whole team got laid off whatever so it was just 
horrible. Um, it, it's been a lot of layoffs in general in this last year or so of gaming or whatever. I think like, even earlier in the week, Riot laid off a bunch of people and it's just layoffs happening left and right and it just, it just kind, of, kind of made me reflect and I was telling my wife this the other day and I remember, I, I probably talked about it on here before whatever but um, on two separate occasions I worked as a contractor for Microsoft um, and for those of y'all who don't know I work in IT I currently work in IT in the medical field um, now or whatever but years back almost 10 years ago now um when i first really really started or whatever i had got a contract job working at my, the microsoft headquarters office here in uh dallas texas um or it's technically in irving but you know what i mean um so i got i worked there two times two separate times on two different contracts for a couple of years total year two and a half years or so roughly total but uh but there were there have been times over the years where I'm like, man, part of me was like, yo, I really worked at Microsoft or whatever. And it's like, man, if I would have got to become full time or just stay there and work permanently or whatever. But just seeing like how frequently over the years they've done rounds of layoffs and stuff, whatever, just across the board, not just the gaming side, but just across their whole company or whatever. I'm kind of like, man, I'm I'm grateful for the experience I got to have early in my IT career working there, but I'm kind of glad that I'm not in that environment anymore and I'm kind of in, in a little bit, hopefully, safer, more secure position where I'm at now. But yeah, I, mean, I, I was just thinking about that, like I said, just reflecting on that with my wife when I heard the news about all the layoffs happening with the gaming stuff, whatever, this week. But uh, yeah, man, it, it, it's, it's crazy. Um, on the flip side of that, um, there there's always rumblings and rumors going on or whatever, but um, it seems like things are building up for Sony to potentially do a state of play soon. Nothing has been confirmed yet, but there's been lots of rumblings of stuff with uh, Death Stranding 2 getting some teaser stuff and a uh, Until Dawn remake and movie announcement was uh happening and stuff whatever so lots of things kind of uh bubbling up so i wouldn't be surprised if in the next week or so uh sony and playstation do another um state of play event so so yeah so just kind of keep your ears and eyes open uh for that so I'm trying to think is there any other like gaming news i want to touch on hold on real quick Oh, I guess last little thing I'll, I'll touch on is because uh, speaking of Xbox and Microsoft, uh, the uh, um, Xbox did a little uh, developer direct a couple weeks ago and showed off a handful of games or whatever. Most of them are not really my thing. Like they showed off a lengthy amount of uh, Avowed, the new game from Obsidian, the people who did uh, uh, Outer Worlds and also did uh, Fallout New Vegas back in the day. Uh, so that game that that's slated for later this year, not my not my cup of tea, whatever game wise. Um, that shoot, showed a new kind of like tactics game. Uh, shoot, I can't think of what that game was called, but once again, not really my cup of tea. Um, they finally gave a date for uh, Hellblade Two, which is I believe May twenty first, I think sometime in May. So that finally got a date after being shown so many times over the last four years. And the one I'm interested in is Machine Games, new game. Uh, the people who made the, the most recent Wolfenstein games, their new uh, Indiana Jones game. And so that game looks really cool. Um, it's gonna be in first person. And so, but the uh, certain um, actions or platforming or whatever, and of course the cutscenes and stuff, all that stuff will be in third person. But, um, but yeah, but otherwise, it's going to be a first-person Indiana Jones game. And I loved those Wolfenstein games. And so this is probably going to be on Game Pass. So I'm going to check it out through that. Uh, I don't really have much, if any, connection to the Indiana Jones series. So like I said, I'm more so here because this is the team that did the Wolfenstein New Order and Wolfenstein 2 New Colossus, which I've told the story before. But that's one of the games I was playing the the week that 
my son Bash was born <laughs> cuz uh cuz that that was the that was the time frame when we it was three big games came out at the same time it was Wolfenstein 2 Assassin's Creed Origins and Super Mario Odyssey all came out on the same day like a week or so before my son was born so I remember playing Wolfenstein 2 finishing that up in the hospital room um <laughs> And then uh, rushing to, to, to take it back to, because uh, I had rented it from Redbox. That was one of the last times that Redbox was doing uh, game rentals. But I remember I had to uh, to uh, get it turned in before like 9 p.m. or 9, 10 p.m., something or whatever. Um, otherwise, i get charged for the day or whatever. But I remember beating through, beating the story or whatever. And then just standing there in the hospital room watching that final cutscene or whatever. And then be like, okay, is it over credits? All right, hey, babe, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go <laughs> run, take this game back or whatever. So rushing to drop it back into the uh, in the uh, thing or whatever before the time hits, whatever. So fun, fun memories. But yeah, so I'm looking forward to checking out that game. So, but yeah, I just had to shout out that developer direct. Um, like I said, check it out. Might be some stuff y'all are interested in looking at. So, um, so yeah. So moving on from there. Um, just a couple of quick manga things I want to shout out. Nothing too much I want to touch on specifically with manga, but uh, but uh, Call of the Night manga has finished. Um, it ended with uh, chapter two hundred, so I haven't read it. So of course there's no spoilers here, or whatever. But I just I just wanted to shout it out because I really enjoyed. So I, I enjoy. So I so I read the first couple of volumes of the manga before the anime came out then i watched the anime anime was visually spectacular the music on point really good anime adaptation um but i never you know jumped back into the manga afterwards or whatever so i might circle around to it because 200 is a nice solid binge amount or whatever and it's all on the viz media app and website so check it out there but um but yeah so just want to shout out call of the night ended uh, speaking of the Viz manga app, Full Night got added to the website. Now, this is a manga I had did a YouTube short of last year, um, but it is one that I highly recommend y'all put on your radar. So, uh, so just as a little reminder for those who might have forgot or just didn't uh, catch me talking about it back then. Uh, Full Night basically takes place in kind of like a dystopian future to where the sun has been blocked out or is blocked out for whatever reason. And so people volunteer to turn their bodies into plants to provide oxygen for the rest of humanity. So basically, if you become a donor, I'm trying to make sure I'm not getting this mixed up with yeah yeah this is the one uh so you, you uh donate your body or whatever and then basically you, uh once you get the seed implanted you have maybe a couple of years before you fully turn into a plant and so as part of volunteering your body for that or whatever you get a large amount of money for doing so or whatever so a lot of times people who are kind of on hard times and stuff whatever will volunteer their bodies for this or whatever get the money live their life whatever for a couple of years live it up and then just turn into a plant and so it is very eerie very creepy but very good um i think i've read about 20 something chapters of it there's 69 total nice um as of this week um but of course as viz and shonen jump do sometimes whatever there's a gap in the chapters that they're going to backfill eventually whatever but just wanted to put this on uh, people's radar because this was a a very very good uh, series that that I enjoy reading. So um, so yeah, so check out Full Night. Um, trying to think aside from that, um, that's kind of it as far as like manga I've been reading. Um, My Hero Academia is kind of winding up, but I'm not gonna touch on that or whatever too much. The manga for that. Uh, One Piece, like the climax for Egghead Arc, is 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 building and about to burst. Uh, so I'm very excited to see 
where we kind of leave things off with that. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, I think I think later this week I might try to do kind of like a recap of some new volume one manga I had read um, this month. Um, one of them I read was called Tokyo These Days. Um, it is by Tao uh, Matsumoto, who is the same manga author as uh, uh, Number Five, Sunny, um, I think Ping Pong, I think is another one of their series that they've worked on as well. Um, I can't remember. But, uh, but basically it follows a manga editor who basically has kind of lost his passion for it and decides to quit but then he eventually kind of starts to just like live his normal life and then kind of starts to want to come back to do like one final series with kind of like a dream team so to speak of like certain people that he's always wanted to work with and stuff whatever that he's trying to recruit so very very heartfelt story um that seemed like it's gonna be pretty short or whatever because it seems like a, like most of his series seems to be pretty short so i'm interested in checking out more of their work um another manga i had checked out called uh king and limbo uh where basically sometimes humanity gets hit with this kind of like sleeping uh sickness or whatever and people have to there there are these people who specialize and diving into these people's minds to help cure their illness and so it's kind of like a psychological drama type of series that was okay or okay read um it almost lost me though because it, it almost put itself in a, in a position of too much hype because when i went to look on my uh so i mentioned before i used netgalley and idlewise plus those are the two websites that i use to kind of keep track of upcoming releases of books and manga and comics and stuff whatever and that's how I get sometimes early access to uh, to digital copies of stuff to read for review and stuff whatever and so on the on the synopsis thing or on the little uh, description thing for King and Limbo uh, they had for fans of uh, Naoki Urasawa's Monster or The Promised Neverland you're gonna love this that's two big series that I really enjoyed and I'm like yo okay you put a lot of hype and expectation onto the series and so when I first started reading it it wasn't really great I mean I was like man like I do not like that they put those two series as like hey if you like these you're gonna love this no it, it still ended up being okay but no <laughs> don't do those high of uh, comparisons or whatever um, anymore so but yeah so King, King and Limbo uh, what else? Uh, Marriage and Toxin. That's another manga. I read that one like over here, like like sometime earlier last year or whatever, and did a full review on that one. But that one finally got a physical release. Um, same thing with uh, Gachi Akuda. Uh, now that's one I want to go back and read the first volume again. But the uh, the mangaka of Gachi Akuda, she is she basically was the protege of the creator of Fire Force and uh, Soul Eater. She was an assistant on Fire Force and maybe Soul Eater towards the end, but for sure Fire Force. And so right when Fire Force ended, she started her own series like a couple months later called Gachi Akuda that basically follows this young boy who ends up falling into this kind of like trash wasteland. So basically there's like this society above the clouds or whatever and then they dump all of their trash or whatever into like this kind of like area beneath the clouds or whatever and this kid falls into the area and ends up getting this special type of gear that has a special ability or whatever and so basically it, it's his journey trying to learn more about himself but also trying to figure out how to get back up but um super dope if if you enjoy like the art style and stuff uh fire force you can tell that some of that dna carries over here but yeah got you kuda is pretty dope um but yeah the first volume of that came out in english or whatever as well so but yeah so that's it as far as manga i wanted to shout out um 
last thing I'll touch on is a couple of anime uh, that I've watched. I'm trying to think. Uh, let me go through my little Annie list and stuff and see what all I have watched. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm caught up on Hokkaido Girls. Caught up on Solo Leveling. Caught up on A Sign of Affection. Uh, the Wrong Way to Use Healing Magic. Undead Unwanted Adventure. Most of these I've talked about um, on the previous episode. Uh, but all this stuff continues to be fantastic. Like the uh, the adaptation for Solo Leveling has been ridiculous it has been so awesome because like even this most recent episode episode four yeah um uh, the way they animated that snake fight i'm like if y'all are doing that for this fight then the fights that are coming later like the real real fights i'm like yo okay yeah I, i'm i'm locked in for 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 this show or whatever um but yeah they, they've done fantastically with that adaptation of it um a sign of affection continues to be so heartwarming and so unbelievable. I'm just so in love with that show. Uh, Hokkaido Girls continues to be very fun and adorable as well. Um, Undead Unwanted Adventurer, or what is it? Unwanted Undead Adventurer continues to have that nice air of mystery and solid storytelling with these characters, or whatever. Uh, same same thing with the wrong way to use healing magic. Um, like I said, I'm kind of glancing over, over these. I talked about a lot last time. Um, Delicious and Dungeon continues to be really good. Uh, oh, a new one that I started watching. And I think I still need to finish uh, the most recent episode. Uh, oh, let me find it. Uh, seventh Time Loop. The villainess enjoys a carefree life married to her worst enemy. Now, I know that that title was a mouthful, but this is also kind of a uh, a romance type of show. And basically, as the title suggests, she has died multiple times. And uh, so she died the first time or whatever. And so each time after she died or whatever, she basically used that opportunity to learn and to grow and to try something else or whatever. So it was like, okay, she, you know, the first time or whatever. So basically she was originally engaged to this prince. He ends up, um, uh, uh, Lord, my brain is going blank. Uh, Basically, not wanting to marry her anymore, or whatever, and accuses her of all these crimes, or whatever, which she didn't do, and kicks her out of the kingdom, or whatever. So she's exiled, and so she ends up running to this band of merchants, or whatever, travels with them around the world. Eventually, she dies in this war, or whatever, comes back, or whatever, and then, like I said, she you know kind of does things again, and then, like I said, she goes and you know, learns medicine and becomes an adventurer, becomes a swordsman, all these different things, or whatever. And so now she's on her seventh loop. And so now the person who killed her last time has kind of been the guy that has started this war every time that has led to her death, uh, this son of an emperor or whatever. And so she ends up getting engaged to him in this seventh time loop or whatever. And so trying to figure out if she can get close to him to maybe not only live a more carefree life, but also maybe figure out like what happened to lead him to the events of starting this big war or whatever. So, but yeah, it, it's been really good. The show looks beautiful, stunning. Um, I like the characters. These are adults. I think she's what twenty. Yeah, she died at the age of twenty. Da 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 da. Okay, okay, and return to the moment five years prior. So, okay, so she's fifteen when she dies. I think. If that's how the time thing works. I don't know. But anyway, good show. Been enjoying it. Glad I finally gave it a shot because um, hearing the homies over on Mike Check uh, shouting his praises or whatever, I was like, okay, you know, I got to check that out. So, uh, trying to think uh, what else. I think, I think that's it as far as like new anime. I started checking out. Um, 
yeah, yeah, that that that's really been it. So, but yeah, so winter season continues to be really really good. Um, like I said, I have that core group of shows that are like, okay, hey, I must watch every week, and it's like I, I enjoy if I get to Thursday nights sitting down with dinner, watching Delicious in Dungeon. And then, like I said, just over the weekend, whenever I can, getting to watch A Sign of Affection and Solo Leveling and Free Rent still and Apothecary Diary still. Um, and then, like, like, so like my two kind of fantasy shows I'm really into with uh, Unwanted Undead Adventure and Wrong Way to Use Healing Magic. Those are kind of like my core that I'm like really, really, really sticking to whatever. And then there's some other ones I'm kind of watching as I get time, whatever, too. But, um, but yeah, overall, good shows to watch, good stuff to read. And with that, I think I'm going to wrap this up because it's almost midnight and I'm getting tired. Uh, but like I said, I just had to record today because like I said, I've been wanting to talk about Prince of Persia and uh, Power World and stuff like that. Uh, for a while so I'm glad I can finally touch on that stuff whatever and hopefully you know by the time next time I get to record I'll hopefully have gotten to put in some time with uh, with the uh, retail version of the Suicide Squad game and who knows what else cause uh, cause this the 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 the, the games are coming and <laughs> the game releases are upon us uh, cause matter of fact let me take a quick look at this uh at this uh, release calendar. <sighs> Let me see, is this for this year? Nope. Hold on real quick. I need a 2024 list. Okay, yeah, so so yeah, so yeah, for, for this for January, yeah, the biggest releases were the Prince of Persia game, Tekken A, Like a Dragon Infinite Well. Those are kinda like some like the biggest of the biggest. And then, uh, yeah, starting next week at the beginning of February, um, uh, for the RPG people who got that Grand Blue, Grand Blue Fantasy Relink coming out. Um, like I mentioned, Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, um, Persona 3 Reload, uh, Foam Stars, and <laughs> Hell Divers 2, um, Banishers, Ghost of New Eden. That is one. Okay, that's in that. Okay, that's around Valentine's Day. So okay, so I gotta keep that in mind. Um, they're doing a Tomb Raider one through three remaster, um, middle of the month. Uh, that Skull and Bones game is finally coming out. See how that does. Uh, hmm, Pacific Drive, Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy Seven Rebirth. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. The the the, the games are starting to starting to roll out. So. Yes, yeah, so get get your get your wallets ready. <laughs> but like I said, I, I'm very excited. Like I, said, I can I look forward to continue to chip away at Prince of Persia and then dive into Suicide Squad next weekend and then go on from there. But um yeah, so that's gonna do it for this episode. As always, thank y'all so much for watching and or listening. Yeah, I know you can find me everywhere at Danny's to Talk. Make sure you're Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're not already for the video version or on your favorite podcast service. Um, if you would be so kind, leave your boy a review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, wherever, to let the good people know that your boy Rob is out here doing what he do. <laughs> but, uh, but I hope everybody out there has... An awesome rest of your week as you get ready to wrap up these last few days of January and head into February. Um, and yeah, so I'm supposed to head off to bed, but I hope y'all have an awesome rest of your day and week. And as I always say, treat yourself to something nice. Oh, actually, shout out. I forgot to mention this at the top of the show. I found this very dope um, Aang from Avatar The Last Airbender pop pop figure at uh ross for four dollars so shout out to my wife for finding it while we were in there getting some stuff for the kids so i had to shout that out real quick but yeah so as i always say <laughs> treat yourself to something nice 
read some manga, watch some anime, TV, and movies, and play some video games, and of course, live your best life. And with that, I am out. Y'all have an awesome, awesome day. Thank you so much for all the love and support, and I'll catch y'all on the next one. Y'all be easy. Peace. Hehehehe. <laughs>